And so cesium's got a 30-year half-life times 10. Everything half-life is times 10. So that's 300 years you'll find the cesium. There's 100 times plutonium. Plutonium with a U. Uh, I'm sorry. Strontium with an S. <laughs> strontium 90 that came across at the same time with cesium. And like when you had iodine, massive floods of iodine, you could, and you can check the nuclear proctologist for USA and Canada's, and you'll see a um, couple of hundred headlines there. Let me keep going. So I didn't get to this one. Uh, it was detectable right across the northern hemisphere after four days from Fukushima. There was three melter reactors and a detonated reactor. And I just want to touch on a couple of things here. In the comments section was um, D and I mutations. And uh, I was reading through it and they left a comment if Dana's watching. And there was a link to uh, Paul uh, Langley's nuclear history blog. And he's talking about the human tissues harvested without permission. There was a couple of thousand children in Australia. And you can see the bottom of um, that, that if Dana is watching this topic, you might really like YouTube uh, about this cover up. And that was um, Sun and Storm. I didn't import it. I didn't have time because I forgot about it. And then I remembered it. Sun and Storm, atomic testing in Australia. Fukushima fallout will be far worse. That's on YouTube. Sun and Storm, atomic testing in Australia. Fukushima fallout will be far worse. That's an Australian documentary about the fallout in their country and all the children that were dug up. There's a few thousand children and people dug up by the industry, had their bones cremated to, in order to get see how much plutonium was in it. It's a maniacal industry, no matter how you try it. Totally maniacal. And Paul Langley, I'm not sure if this is his recent or one of his older blogs. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to mention that because I do read things all the time. And it was, I always say I should do that, so tonight I've done it. Because I do get my name mentioned a lot. And now they just mentioned me by Dana. And it's like, <laughs> you can assume it's me they're talking about because I've seen it so much. Uh, temporary closing of India power plant. Now, that was the title of the story we got here tonight. Uh, the Indian Point power plant. Now, the Wall Street only put a little tiny burp there and you got to pay to read the rest of it. But I found another link to it. And that's below the video. That's the Indian Point power plant. And they have protests here since Fukushima. This is the inside um, of, a, of a reactor. And it's a pretty amazing picture. And so this is how they're indoctrinating the population anyway. But temporary closing of the Indian Point power plant is considered. And so millions of fish, you can read it up there, right? Millions of fish are killed as Indian Point sucks in 2.5 billion gallons of the Hudson River water daily to cool the plant's components. So every plant on the planet is sucking in all this water and frying, boiling. It's boiling that water, so it cooks everything in it. And so a glass of salt water, 75 to 100 million phytoplankton, the basis of the food chain, and that also sequesters carbon. And the, and the basis of oxygen. One of the most important things, itty bitty double cell cr critter, creature, I shouldn't call it critter because that's what I reserve for the nuclear industry. And so they boil, uh, there's a billion other creatures in a glass of salt water besides the 75 to 100 million phytoplankton. And so it kills them. Now if you go down and kick over a rock on the beach, they'll club you and tase you, pepper spray you and drag you into court and bankrupt you and destroy you and vilify you in the media and the local rags and everything else, right? But it's okay for the nuclear industry to boil billions of gallons in each reactor a day, destroying untold numbers, just one to the power of 100 million, you know, over a year. It's an inconceivable number. I don't, I don't know if it'll be that big of a number because that's actually a, a massive number, but it's an inconceivable number when you think that a glass of water has 75 to 100 million phytoplankton and then billions of other little creatures into it that are bigger than them, right? And so it's an inherently bad thing. 
because it's destroying. So when you think about Canada, with 25 reactors around Ontario, and they're using the one fresh water source, and so all the fresh water on the other side of that is boiled and sterilized. And so all those communities that are drinking that water, they're not getting the normal bacteria, the normal life that's in your water and, and is good for you, is not harmful to you. No, it's really hideous what they do. They build these reactors right on the water for that purpose. And a couple of billion gallons a day, and now when that discharges back in, it's still hot. Right? So, like, it goes on and on and on, the cycle of it. And now when you kill all these creatures, you're boiling all these creatures. <coughs> so now it's an amazing amount of cubic miles. I got the numbers, dear. And um, just hang on a second, see if I can find it. I probably shouldn't even bother. Just one second. Um, sometimes I'm really good and sometimes I'm not. Ah, there it is. So all reactors are boiling water reactors, and they each boil around a million gallons a minute. And a drinking glass of salt water, once again, contains around 75 to 100 million phytoplankton, and they're the basis of the food web, and the phytoplankton releases the oxygen into the water. Over half of the Earth's oxygen is created via phytoplanktons, not to mention there are billions of other marine animals in the same glass of water. I just covered that, I don't know. So there's 400, 1,440 minutes in a day and 400 plus operating reactors worldwide. Another way to think about it is each day a single nuclear plant boils 1.4 billion gallons of water or 5,347 miles, 5,347 miles of eight cubic yard cement trucks of water bumper to bumper. Or every month you can circle the planet six times with eight cubic yard cement trucks full of water of dead marine life. Or with 400 boiling water plants, that means we could circle the planet 2,400 times a month with eight cubic yard cement trucks that you see on the highway every day, bumper to bumper. 2,400 circles are a month from the nuclear plants. That's just 400, of them. that's not all of them. And that's not uh, counting the universities, couple of thousands. We get around uh, 7,500 cubic miles of boiled water. 7,500 cubic miles of boiled water over 40 years with 400 boiling water reactors. There's 19 cubic miles of water over 40 years per reactor. So Canada, 25 boiling reactors, that's uh, 468 miles, cubic miles, uh, of fresh water. And so you killed all the life all the animals in the water and we can say the Great Lakes are basically boiled so much to almost sterilized and they're empty of oxygen after 40 years. And America by the way has enough radiation waste to cover all of the states and not all of the states oh that's the wrong one enough to cover West Virginia, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey Hawaii, New Hampshire, Delaware, and Vermont, the entire state's in a half an inch of chunks, ground up chunks of nuclear waste. So when they say there's three